A lot of people go to Bali every year looking for great weather, great food, nature, surfing and parties. However, there is an increasing number of people that argue that Bali is overrated. Is this true? Here's a full review of a 4 to 5 day solo trip to Bali. Hope you enjoy! Alright, if there's something Bali really does not lack, it's things to do. It doesn't matter what your preferences are, either if it's surfing, hiking, partying or not doing anything at all, you are going to find your place in Bali. For those who like surfing, you've come to the right place. I came to Bali with the objective of improving my surfing skills, I ended up a little bit disappointed. My first beach was Chengu Beach, which is meant for intermediates. My first impressions were quite bad as the beach was super dirty and there were too many people. The waves, however, were the perfect size and doing a little extra effort avoiding the crowd, you can manage to have a nice time. Just make sure your swimming skills are on point as there is quite a rough sea. I just came back from my first surfing session in Bali. The waves were super nice, they were perhaps too nice. Uh, some of them were super, super, super big and I almost broke my neck. Also, the board rental throughout Bali is super cheap. You can get one board for two hours for as cheap as three euros. As I was tired of the crowds, that same day I decided to go to a more low-key beach 20 minutes from Chengu by motorbike. The name of the beach is Kedungu Beach and you have to pay a small fee if you are entering by any means of transportation. There is a small place to rent surfboards and the staff were super friendly. The water there is cleaner and there is even a small waterfall nearby which makes the place even more special. There was literally no one when I first went in the water. The waves are as good as in Chengu and I was able to catch every single one I wanted since I didn't have to watch out for other people. I'm in this beach which has very nice waves and there's almost no one. When I came back the next day, it was a bit more crowded as there were surf camps doing some lessons, but it wasn't as crowded as Chengu was by far. I'd advise you to come midday to afternoon if you want to be practically alone. Towards the end of my trip, I tried to surf in Balangan Beach, but it was impossible. The beach was super crowded and to be fair, the overall vibe of the place is quite sketchy. Now moving on from surfing, the first two nights I stayed in Chengu, which is a quite nice area for partying, surfing and eating good food. My first full day, I spent it surfing. After my second surf session in Kedungu Beach, I decided to walk to Tana Lot Temple, which is a very famous temple nearby. What I didn't know was that the road was as muddy as it can get, and what should have been a half an hour walk, it turned into an hour and a half. The road is just unwalkable, like... Look at these, come on. I broke my sandals, so I had to walk barefoot for a large distance. As a compensation though, the views from the road were astonishing, with rice fields spreading all around and plenty of animals. Eventually, I reached a small village where, after asking for water, they offered me one of their toilets to wash my feet for free. I just arrived to this village and uh, the people saw me, I was completely trashed and they offered me a place to, to wash my feet. Ah, <laughs> thank you Bali. Ah, it's been crazy, really. But I made it. After that, I reached Tana Lot Temple. It is quite big with multiple sections. It is very crowded but the views are amazing. Part of the temple is located on a cliff and it's perfect for sunset. You can also see some brave surfers surfing, the crazy waves that break into the cliffs. The main temple is located on an island, which you can only reach when it's low tide. Make sure you leave the temple on time, since there's a chance you get trapped inside and have to wait until it's low tide again. The next day I went to Denpasar, the capital of the island. To be honest, I wanted to see a place with actual locals and feel a little bit of the true Bali, but I ended up quite disappointed. There's a massive monument in the center of the town, which looks great from the outside, but you have to pay around 3 euros to enter, and I decided not to go. 
around the town there's other interesting places, mainly museums, but I didn't go to any of them as they were quite expensive too and didn't seem that interesting. The town itself is not very walkable, the distances are huge and there isn't much to see. Perhaps the most interesting part is the central market, there you can get the full local experience. I didn't see any tourists there and the place is massive and super interesting. You can buy anything from clothes to spices. It seems there's a lot going on there and I really enjoyed the experience. Apart from that, I went to one mall which didn't have anything interesting and I decided to return to my accommodation as the next day I was waking up at 1am. Okay, this was one of the best things of my trip. I hired a tour which included breakfast, guide, transportation and everything needed to climb Mount Batur, which is the second highest volcano in the island. It all cost me around 30 euros and in case you're interested you can book it through Pelago. My driver picked me up at 1am and after picking up two more tourists, he drove us to the start of the hike. After one hour and a half, we arrived at a small restaurant where they served us some coffee, biscuits and gave us some lanterns and sticks to help us with our hike. We started walking at around 4am. The hike is not made for everyone, it is quite demanding at some points and I had to leave my group behind as they were struggling to walk 5 minutes without resting. One might be deceived by the big crowds, but if you make up your mind that it's going to be quite crowded, you won't really mind, at least that's what happened to me. After one hour and a half climbing the volcano, I made it to the top just in time to watch the sunrise. This was truly one of the best sights I've ever experienced. I was super lucky to have clear skies as many normally encounter a sea of fog and big clouds, which doesn't really allow you to see a few meters from where you are. From up there, you can see the lake, Mount Agung, the highest in Bali, and the whole volcanic structures around Mount Batur. Although there were big crowds, I was completely amazed by the sight. If you come, make sure the weather forecast is favorable. After seeing how the steam comes out of the volcano, we started our descent through a similar path. The landscape only got prettier. After the hike, they took us to a tea slash cocoa slash coffee plantation to try some tea and coffee made in Bali as well as some local chocolate. It felt amazing after the hike and it helped me wake me up too. After climbing Mount Batur, I asked my driver to drop me off in Ubud instead of Denpasar. Ubud is the cultural heart of Bali and there's many things to do around the area. I would recommend spending at least two days but unfortunately I only had one day. I don't have a super nice memory of Ubud, but I think it was because I was very tired from the hike and I had to carry my heavy backpack around the hilly village. First, I checked out some very famous and picturesque stairs. Then, I did a small walk with sights to a valley. After that, I went to the market, which didn't have anything special, and when I got to the Ubud temple, it started raining crazy, so I had to wait there until it stopped. While I was waiting, I met a couple of Spanish tourists who advised me not to go to the monkey forest, as it is very expensive and there isn't anything special about it. I decided to follow their advice and I headed to Uluwatu. Uluwatu is a trendy destination in Bali, located in the Bakit Peninsula, south of the airport. The place is now filled with digital nomads, woke people and surfers. I guess I'm a mix of those three types. As I said before, the first thing I did in the morning was to go to Balangan Beach, but I couldn't surf there because of the crowds. Then, I decided to visit the posh side of Bali and headed to Nusa Dua, which is located on the eastern part of the Bakit Peninsula. After going through some security checkpoints, I arrived at the beach. Now, I know it looks quite pretty, but the vibes are not that good. There's only families and rich people around and it doesn't really invite you to go and blend with the atmosphere. As the beaches are mostly artificial and I could even see the trucks bringing the sand to a beach under construction. According to my invented Indonesian, Nusa Dua means two islands, which makes reference to the two islands slash peninsulas next to the beaches. I did a small walk around them and it was absolutely beautiful, relaxed and well taken care of. There are also some monuments around the area in case you want to check them out and the rest is just hotels, hotels and more hotels. 
This whole place is just an amusement park for rich people. There's really nothing much you can do here besides from, you know, visiting these artificial beaches and see this monument here, which is just quite, I don't know, lame. Here there's like a something they call water blow, which apparently it's like a, a, like a formation of rocks that when the waves come and break in, they just, the water just goes up, but uh, you have to pay to enter, which I find that just very disgusting. Yeah, Nusadua, if you're not rich, do not come here. My last afternoon was probably the most interesting. Oh boy, what an adventure. I took a Gojek to Nyan Nyan Beach at the southern part of the Bucket Peninsula. The beach is located behind some mountains going down a cliff. The path to get there is as steep as it gets, but the views are 100% worth it. Nyan Nyan Beach is not a place for swimming as the ground is quite rocky and the waves are extreme. However, if you bring water shoes and you are an expert surfer, you are going to love this place. The beach feels very isolated, which gives a touch of exoticism. There's even a random crash plane in the mountains. Crazy. I decided to walk out the beach and headed to my next destination by foot. After walking for a long time, I befriended a group of Japanese TikTokers who were laughing at my, let's say, peculiar looks. Okay, I'm about to do something which looks illegal, but people told me to do this, so uh, let's go. They showed me the way to this amazing cliff called Karang Boma Cliff. The place is just breathtaking. You can see the waves crashing down. There aren't many tourists, so you can take as many pictures as you want without getting interrupted. Everything is just magical. This has been by far the best place I visited on my trip. I think this is inside some kind of private property, however nobody told me off. I decided to keep walking, the people around the road were super friendly and everyone kept saying hi to me. By the way, I filmed this grandpa carrying a big ass knife. What a legend. Later, I arrived at the Uluwatu temple, which I decided not to visit as the entrance fee was too expensive and it isn't as impressive as Tana Lot. While deciding whether to enter or not, I witnessed a tourist being taken to the hospital because a monkey had eaten one of his fingers. Yeah, these things happen in Bali. My last stop was Uluwatu Beach. You also have to pay a small fee to enter. They make you pay to enter most of the beaches, which is so freaking annoying. <sighs> However, I wish I had come here before. The vibes are super nice and the beach is beautiful. It is located inside some rocky formations. There are bars and restaurants all over the cliff nearby where you can watch the sunset. I didn't surf here, but I saw very good waves, and it wasn't that crowded. Right, let's jump to a small review of the place I stayed. The first two nights I slept in Changu to be close to the beaches, and also because everyone recommended that area. I stayed at Hello Chengu Homestay, which cost me 38 euros both nights, so 19 euros per night, and if you come with someone, it won't be more than 10 euros each. I got this all for myself, this super great bathroom, here's the shower, and all for 19 euros, so yeah, quite a nice price. It was right next to the beach and it was super clean, with nice AC, big bathroom, beautiful. I arrived at 2 a.m. and the guy in charge was sleeping, so I had to wait until a friend called him, but it was all right in the end. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. The next place where I stayed was in Denpasar, the night before doing the Mount Batur hike. I only stayed there until 1 a.m. and almost didn't sleep, but I think I can give you an honest review. Check out my room in Denpasar for just 14 euros. It's super big. Wow. 
Its name is Urban View Hotel Ryan Mansion, and it only cost me 14 euros per night. Now, although it is near the main places in Denpasar, the room wasn't as pretty as the other places I've stayed in Bali, and for some reason there was something off with it. Perhaps the absence of light? I don't know. Nevertheless, it did the job, and for the price, I have to give it at least a 7.5 out of 10. My last two nights were in Uluwatu, far away from any village, literally in the middle of nowhere. The name of the place is Daba Jaya Uluwatu Red Partner. When you arrive there, you have to phone someone who comes and gives you the keys. Check out my room for just 15 euros per night. It is so nice. I have to be honest with you, I had big problems with this accommodation. For some reason, they insisted that I didn't have a reservation there and they were trying to make me go to another hotel, which was a thousand times worse. I had already paid for my two nights and I was disturbed up to four times during my evening by different people trying to convince me to leave the place, even though I had all the proof I was right and they were wrong. To be fair, the accommodation was beautiful, super spacious, with a TV with Netflix and close to the main sites in Uluwatu. The price was also nice, only 15 bucks per night, but the way it was treated makes me give it a 6 out of 10. Food! Okay, I must say this is my favorite category by far. This was 50% of why I went to Bali in the first place, and I wasn't disappointed at all. As a vegetarian, I must say this is truly heaven. In Chengu, I went to Shady Shack, where they have these amazing smoothie bowls. I got one with dragon fruit and granola. Take into account that in most restaurants in Bali, they'll charge you the taxes separately. It was around 450 euros in total, and I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Another place where you can get healthy smoothie bowls is the local Chichari bar. They cost around 5 euros and I mean, look at all that fruit. I went twice and for me, that's an 8.5 out of 10. For lunch in Chengu, I went to a Greek restaurant called Santorini Greek Restaurant. I got some feta cheese with a feta gyros. Yes, I miss feta so much. The price was around 6 euros and I was never disappointed, not super happy with the food. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. The next day I was going to have lunch at an Italian restaurant, but I got confused and ended up in a place called the Avocado Factory. I paid 5 euros for this amazing salad, oh my god, it was perfect, that's a 9 out of 10. For dinner I went to a Lebanese restaurant called Zali. The food was okay, but the quantities were not that big. Also, it is super overpriced, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. I would recommend other options. In Denpasar, I went to this vegan restaurant in the middle of the city called Define, plant-based, and guys, I got this spicy food rice bowl for 1 euro 20 cents, and it was by far my best meal in Bali. This is a 9.5 out of 10. Ubud has this very famous place called Zest. It looks like a temple or something, and it is full of westerners. The prices are not super high, and I got this smoothie bowl and some hummus, which cost me around 10 euros. If you like healthy food, it is definitely worth visiting while you are in a boot. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. In Uluwaru, you definitely have to check out Lands and Cafe. It is super cheap and you get loaded smoothie bowls like this one. It was one of my favorites. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. Lastly, although I don't have much footage from it, I went two nights in a row to this restaurant called Nioman Local Food. They serve Indonesian food and although they got my order wrong ones and they gave me this plate with meat, the prices are 70% lower than the other restaurants in the area. It is an 8 out of 10 for me. The last section of this video is going to be about transportation. Getting around in Bali might be tricky and there are some things you need to know beforehand. Public transportation is almost non-existent and it is not as cheap as you would expect. The only bus I went in was from Ubud to Bali and it cost me almost the same as a Gojek, Grab or Uber. 
my recommendation would be that you rent a motorbike, in case you know how to, of course. It gets as cheap as only $3 per day, and it is the best way to move around the island. Do not rent a car, as the traffic jams are massive and sneaking around with a motorbike might save you hours of waiting. Plus, it is more expensive. In case you don't have your license or you don't feel confident riding a motorbike, there's many other options available. I was in that situation and I did a lot of research before coming. However, there are many things I wish I had known before. Both Uber, Grab and Gojek work in the island, although I would recommend Grab and Gojek as they are cheaper. Make sure that unless you have to move around with big suitcases or something, you always ask for a motorbike and not a cab, as you will save a lot of money, time, and honestly, the experience is just more interesting. Generally, Gojek is cheaper and the motorbikes are better, but I used more Grab at the beginning just because I'm more used to it. 30 minute trips by Gojek or Grab cost around 2 euros, which is just perfect. However, not many people know that traditional taxi mafias control big portions of the island and they technically ban Gojek or Grab drivers from entering certain parts. Outside Tunnel Lot, I even had to sneak to my Grab driver as some people that work with these mafias were about to confront us. Generally, you won't get into any trouble as they know you're a tourist, but always stay alert. In fact, the airport is completely controlled by the taxi mafia, and I had no other choice but to get one. Even though I managed to reduce 50% of the initial price they offered me, it still cost 4 to 5 times more than a regular Gojek. So, in my opinion, is Bali really worth visiting? The island definitely offers something to everyone, as I said before, whether you are a surfer, a hiking enthusiast, or you just want to chill, you've come to the right place. However, I don't know if it is the fact that it is so massified that Bali looks artificial, and in the end, loses much of the charm one pictures before coming. Rather than disappointing, it is unfulfilling, or at least it was to me. Now, should you visit Bali? Definitely yes especially if you come with friends and if it is your first experience in Southeast Asia. As I said, it doesn't disappoint, it is just not spectacular at all. You're going to have a nice time anyways, so don't be afraid if you have already bought your tickets. If you are an experienced traveler and you are looking for something more local and exciting, try going to the islands east of Bali such as Lombok or Nusa Tenggara. That concludes my review of Bali. Hope you enjoyed and see you soon.